Hi everyone, this is Radul live, yes, on the weekend that the World Rally Championships has returned to Kenya. And I know that Nairobi has moved to Naivasha, to the Mara, to all those areas. Guys, when you're out and about, make sure you look out for Team Betika. There are four rally uh, teams that are sponsored or partnered with Betika, including the all-female team of Maxine Wahome and Chantal Young. So make sure if you see them, you wave. If you see those cars with loud uh, speakers, make sure you wave at Team Betika. And of course, as Betika, they're supporting every single Kenyan team that has entered this uh, rally championships so that they do well, so that we come out with our heads held high. But I think the fact that we are hosting the um, event is an achievement is in itself. But allow me to introduce to you future kings and queens of Kenyan athletics, current and future, that's what I should say. 100 meters, national champions, taking Kenyan men to the 100 meters in uh, Olympics, something that has never ever happened. Allow me to introduce Ferdinand Omanyala. Thank you. And uh, Mark Otieno. Thank you. Oti, you see that? I didn't know <laughs> we decided we're talking national language. No, let's talk in English or Kiswahili. Mm. Guys, first of all, congratulations. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, I think the entire country was impressed. Mm. We have never had men enter the uh, 100 meter or qualify for the 100 meters Olympics. You two are the first. Um, I'm proud to say that women, we've been there before. I just <laughs> need to throw that in, in 1988, <laughs> uh, Joyce Odiambo. But it's, a, it's no mean feat because yeah. whether we like it or not, the competition for men is much higher. Yeah. So qualification for you is much higher. Mm. First and foremost, your, before we get into your background, your reaction to qualifying. Uh, when I crossed that finish line, I did not realize I'm the one who, who was won. What made me celebrate was the time that displayed on that. 10 0 1. 10 0 2. Sorry. Yeah. That time was crazy fast. Mm -hmm. I was not celebrating even uh, my win. I was celebrating that time. Because it was your best ever. Yeah. I mean, like, you it was the fastest time ever in Kenya. Well, congratulations. Mark, what was your reaction when you realized I've qualified for 100 meters? Did you think you'd qualify? And then what was your reaction? Um, to be honest, I was overwhelmed because I was looking for that qualification ever since from January. And um, running that 10.05, first of all, I was overwhelmed, number one, two, it was a personal best and I was so happy. And yeah. you trended on Twitter. That's, <laughs> a that's Unfortunately, that's all the support Kenyans ever give you, trending yeah, on Twitter. And, media. Yeah. and we'll get into those domains. <laughs> but then we have to get into those domains because yeah. I think us as fans have really let a lot of our athletes down. Mm. Um, but we'll get into that. How did you get into, Ferdinand, let me start with you. How did you get into athletics as a sport and what was your journey starting from when you were young did you ever think i want to be a professional athlete tell okay, me a bit the, about the, your journey the, the professional athlete part was not in my mind mm -hmm. what i knew is that uh, i could just run because i used to sprint with my brothers they're elder than me but then i could beat them eh, when i was a but young you don't kid. say <laughs> <laughs> i don't say i've already said <laughs> you already said so uh joining high school is when now i started uh, playing sport competitively because I joined rugby in form three when I was in form three. You look rugby, by yeah. the way. <laughs> yeah, that's what, uh, I've, that's what has built me. My foundation was in rugby. But previously I used to play hockey and uh, basketball. But then in basketball, I think when I was in form two, the discipline was too high for me. I could not. <laughs> 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 All the sports <laughs> take discipline. All the oh, sports take discipline. In Getting 10 or 2 <laughs> takes discipline. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's later. Yeah. But mm -hmm. basketball in Kamsinga was, you know, in Form 2, I was, I was cheeky and stubborn. <laughs> and <laughs> so I could not manage that. And then hockey, hockey went there for like a week. And then I saw the injuries that guys come out of the pitch with. I said, nah. It's not for me. <laughs> That's not for me. <laughs> but when I quit hockey in Form 2, I got an injury, I got hit by a sticky, and I just saw white and then blood yeah. and <laughs> so my hands of what, what what made me just <laughs> throw that stick and just leave was some guy was hit by a ball on his Aye. eyes and then it just popped out like the whole this thing just Ouch. cut out and i said no i'm done Kai. <laughs> and, Kai. Just leave. And, and, and something <laughs> told you rugby was safer <laughs> it's better <laughs> <laughs> so i just decided to join rugby in form three and then after that I was too fast actually for the guys, but I did not realize if I did not know that I could join athletics in, in high school, so I just decided to play rugby. So after high school, I came to University of Nairobi to pursue Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I, I joined Main Machine, but then again, Kenya Cup is too, is too tough. Yeah, the, the trainings, people hit 
each other on training as if it's a real game. Yes. So I mm. said, again, this one. <laughs> this one, no. Can you like your face too much? Yeah. Don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have some scars of rugby. There's, uh-huh. I think, one here. There's one here. I can see here. Yeah. So this day, I fell, and then I, I, I beat a stone. Like You beat the yeah, stone? It, I mean, like, it just got into my mouth. And then I cut my mouth. And then after that, I hit some guy. I was going to make a try. And then this guy was coming from on the left side and then he just hit my eyes and so I was told to go for surgery to rip, to me uh, to is it called s- to see uh, 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 stitches yeah, yes, stitches, stitches. Yeah. so I said no let it just be so that's the only injury I've gotten in rugby and so uh wow, when that's I the only injury <laughs> I <didn't laughs> lost my eye that's the only one yeah that's the <laughs> only one because <laughs> you know at the wing you mm. step and leave so it's hard for people to tackle you even if someone comes and tackles you, it's not that hard. Mm-hmm. Like the guys at the park, those guys who play at the for the forwards. So after uh, I d- decided to leave, I, I went now to play for a rugby, a rugby team that's lower at the championship level, uh, Ma- Mount Kenya University. Mm-hmm. They were training here, they were training at uh, Railways. So while there, I met this guy called uh, Colin Smola. He used to run uh, previously 100 meters. So he told me, you're too fast for the guys in the pitch try athletics. So I, w- I just went online and then I searched for the Athletics Kenya calendar 2016 season. And then I saw the events. The first event was in Mumias. The second one was in Nakuru. So I, I decided to give it a try. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I borrowed money. Uh, I told my dad I want to sprint. And then my dad used to sprint before. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> he knew. So he told me go and buy spikes. I was like, what are spikes? I thought maybe he's asking me to go and buy nails or something. <laughs> so he just told me go go to <laughs> go to Gikosh, Gikomba, and just tell these guys you want spikes. They'll know and understand what you want. So I went there. He sent me five k. I got I got my first boot, my first spikes, the running shoes, and some other kits. Mm-hmm. And then I traveled to Mumias. Going to Mumias is where now the journey started. I, I ran my first event, and then when we were going for the finals, there was, I mean, when I got there first, mm. I, I, was, I was a bit tensed, because I'm seeing these guys coming with Kenyan teams, Kenya wearing Kenyan jerseys. Intimidation. Yeah, intimidation. <laughs> they're big prisons guys. <laughs> and then they're wearing their spectacles, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm there. The only thing I have is my bag and uh, a, a, a bottle of water. I think it was the Sunny. I had bought some water and my rugby shorts and my rugby tights and i'm like these guys are coming with vests kenyan vests <laughs> 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 but one thing i told myself i cannot come from nairobi to mumias just to come and chicken out yeah. of a race so i got there and i won that event so from there it's been so they took notice difference. of you they did F- no. before i started the finals there was this guy who told me Oye, kijana, uh, and i'm like and then i beat that guy terribly mm-hmm. I, I think he still knows me up to now <laughs> so that's trust how it me he knows <laughs> that's how right the now journey. trust me <laughs> yeah that's how the journey began now i have so many follow-up questions which i'll come to uh, after i've allowed uh, uh, mark mm. do people call you mark or they call you otieno or they call you ot uh, they call me mark they call you yeah. Mark. Yes. Hey, poshness. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, tell me about your journey. Um, I started in class two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least um, that's where I knew that, you know, we were. Th- there was another lady who was in class five. Mm-hmm. So both of us used to represent athletics. Um, Nilisomia St. Juliet, which is in Isili. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so upon the journey, Lianza, but I didn't take it that much seriously until <coughs> after um, high school. That's when Vinyalifika Form 4. Kuna dere likali ya loka, so kufungwa loka, likuwa na picha yose nbolt up, even in my classmates, baka saizu wanashina waki nukumbushe yo, yo story. So, every time nikiangali yo photo, I used to tell God, maze, me I want to do this career, I want to take this as a career, because um, I haven't discovered what I'm going to study yet in university. So, yeah, after high school, nika decide I want to take this thing seriously, ndo nikenda kutrain, ndo my first training ilianza Kenya prisons, that upon mm-hmm. the journey began. You know, the, what I've seen the difference in your stories is that you were intentional in what you want to do. Mm. And they say that when you visualize something, it manifests. Yeah. So having that Usain Bolt picture, it manifests. And we've seen it come to yeah. light. Yours seems so accidental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As in it was process they, of elimination. What I wanted to do in athletics. No. Le, no. Le, no. Le, <laughs> athletics gonna do. So uh-huh. when I got into athletics 2016, 
my main aim was to come and run for like six months because I used to love I love rugby because mm-hmm. me my dream in high school was to de- to join Kenya Sevens. Mm-hmm. So me mm-hmm. lugha na sema athletics. I run kidogo ni pate pesa alafu. Then I do what I want to do. Nenua gari. Ni kwenda nda na training ya rugby. Your life is not in your hands. <laughs> somebody <laughs> else has other plans. And somebody else gave you a talent for a reason. <laughs> yeah. But the disturbing part is the fact that as Kenya, we know we are an athletics country, but we also know where we fall short, which is in the short distances and the field events. Mm-hmm. And it surprises me that as good as you were, nobody at the federation or at AK or a, a coach or a PE teacher even looked, okay, you said somebody told you you're fast, so try. Yeah. But we should have, as a country, a design. Yeah. As mm. in, the way we do football scouting. Yeah. Mm. As in, why don't we do athletic scouting? Okay, no, for me, for what I know is that there's athletic scouting for middle and long distance. Exactly. But now for mm. sprints, it's not there because nobody has ever done it. So mm. there's no way I'll come and open a sprints academy and there are no people. Because mm. most of these guys coming up, Mtuata Pombia, Kenya sprints are kula mali utaenda. So this guy will have to switch to football or rugby. Mm. So that that part that you have to tap this talent from a young age, that part is not there. That part is not there it because not I there. say why? Mm. Why why should we focus on the long distances mm. which is saturated? Mm. Yeah. I still remember a tweet that I think it was Rudisha put out a couple of years ago when he was the, the, the captain of the athletics team. Mm. And he was saying more than 400 um, uh, athletes mm-hmm. had qualified, mm. had met timings for mm. some of these long distance races. Yeah. Yet we we're taking to do 80. We do the <laughs> other 300 and something. <laughs> uh, That's so true. That should spark something in the fed in the uh, in the athletics Kenya to yeah. say, you know what? Mm. Why don't we exploit these other distances? Yeah. Isn't that something you wish could happen? Because I doubt, as much as I respect what you've achieved, mm. I doubt you're the only two who could have met this time. Yeah, yeah. it's true. If you had been scouted by design. That's so true. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, you would have been found a long time ago when you're mm. 19 or 20. Yeah. You know? Let's talk about coaching, because I hear mm. you have a very interesting coaching story. <laughs> <laughs> How are you coached? <laughs> okay, the coach that I found when I started athletics, the same guy that I have up mm. to now, is the one who has made all this happen. Because when we started training, I used to run with a very bad running style. Because na kumbuka tulikuwa tuna feature you were not funny drills. Because we were doing pathetic things there. So ni kituwezi takam tuwaone. So it tulikuwa tuna jificha and not funny drills. But thank God, everything has changed now. So I've never changed my coach. It's the same one that I've had since I started. And uh, what role has your father played? Because you said he was also a sprinter. Yeah, uh, he, yeah, he was a, a sprinter, but he leaves the the coaching work to the coach. Uh, the only thing he does is give me advice and guide me on what to do and not what to do. Yeah. Is is your coach in himself a professional hundred meter coach? Not yet. We just grew together. Like mm. uh, he, he used to sprint before, but then we approached him and asked if he can help us and guide us. So that's how the journey just began, and now it's <laughs> to the world level. <laughs> Let me come to you. <laughs> Mark, yes. who's your coach? Um, right <laughs> now, currently, I'm training with coach Andrew Cock. Mm-hmm. He's from South Africa in PE, Peter, um, Port Elizabeth. Port Elizabeth. Yes. Yeah, so I've passed through five coaches. Um, three, <laughs> 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 three, uh, car- three who are well, up in Nairobi and two that were in the States. Yeah, so the two in the States, in the past three years, I've been training with them, but online. Yeah, so we found you know, sometimes to get an egg grow, you know, that your time, we know what to do. So you have to go like 10 times better, because sometimes you might go do some few things that, you know, that will lead up to injury and everything. So this one, when you I haven't met him physically. At least when we had a trip to the States, at least to Limoana. So the one that I'm with, I've qualified with someone who ha- I haven't met him physically. And... It's so, you know, something touching, and I would love to see him, to be honest. And um, he's the one when you my program, we see it. If we are not sure about it, we still ask questions. We call after every two weeks just to get to know how we are doing and everything. So it's been a journey. Which is, I mean, it's, it's excellent that you have somebody you can uh, draw the professionalism from. Yeah. But... To think that you're going into an Olympic against people who have coaches that they have this kind of relationship with, they're yeah. with every day, <coughs> morning, noon, nine, mm. it's probably the one whistling to wake you up in the morning. 
you know mm. does it, you f do you feel at a disadvantage of, i mean naturally you are at a disadvantage yeah i feel at a disadvantage but yes cuz there are things that i need to learn mm. and i need him to be here because to you know see to see cuz right now for both of us me and my wife and also one of my teammates um it's like now we are doing double work mm. yeah we are doing double work you're doing his job at the same time you're also helping each other cuz if he's here you know vitu zitakuwa rahisi cuz our job is just to run for him is just to see the mechanics and everything the timings and all to know what to adjust and all kinds of stuff so you're giving reports yes. instead of seeing first hand yeah um i think you're fortunate enough first of all to mm -hmm. have a wife who is, is can can step up for you yeah. what what does her involvement mean to you um it means everything first um she loves jesus that's what really drew me close to her. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah, and I'm a small man ever from 2016 from you know trying out the previous Olympics and but, but the them days we were courting and we got married in 2019. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it's been a journey <laughs> and so far so good I'll say that it's Jesus and I together. That one I can say that it's both our energy and our strength. No. The God na metoka pamoja and she's been so helpful she's been so supportive we both have differences but we've managed to go through it and she was also an athlete yes yeah, she's also an upcoming athlete and she's doing so well which is which is important because mm. if she's now your coach on the ground taking your timings mm. and watching she's the eyes of your South African coach yeah it helps that she has an understanding yes of athletics yeah and it's good because you're both in the same field mm -hmm. you know it's angekuwa anafanya job ingine different she wouldn't understand what i'm going through in terms yeah. of getting tired una umona wapi and all kinds of stuff so we both in the same field whatever she feels i feel you know and at least we encouraging each other because a lot of a lot of uh, athletics and you can come in here it's mental as yeah. much as you have to do the physical training mm. how important is you, your mental stability and your focus yeah, it it has to be strong mm. as in to get through even just starting at the starting blocks you have to <laughs> to be mentally strong because if you're shaking there you might record a false start and it all goes back and we saw that even happen to bolt <laughs> is it 100 or 200 meters 100, 100, meters, 100 yeah. meters yeah yeah so it it's not about just training mm. it covers athletics covers a lot of things part of it is mental mental strength take me through a programming day Take me through a day like today how do you train how did you train for the qualifiers okay like today <laughs> i woke up at around 6 went for my long run around 25 minutes and then i go to the gym i mean i got for the to the hill i did 120 meter hill runs around 6 i went back to the house take, took my breakfast and then went to the gym i did a 2 hour session at the gym and then after the gym i walked to the track i did a session at the track you know that's or like that that's basically what i always do like and then we do not say where are you <laughs> <laughs> yeah we understand what's your typical preparation day like um sometimes it depends either I'm on the gym or I'm on the track but for today i slept in the morning while you were training <laughs> you know yeah so um but today i had few plyometrics and um sleds yeah that's typically what we are focusing on so this week it's kind of a bit of introduction of easiness but next week I'm for sure it's going to be something hard but it is it, for both of you it is full time yes. full time yeah. mm. athletes yep. yeah. yeah i, I want us to go into a short break when we come back i want to find out what is the uh, government involvement in what you do how you get money to survive and other challenges hopes and dreams uh, that you want to and your expectations when you go for the olympics so we're going to take a short break guys when we come back there's still lots to know from these guys whether you guys are superstars <laughs> you guys are superstars what i want autographs soon we are done <laughs> we'll see you after the break
Welcome back. This is Radul live on the weekend that Kenya is hosting the World Rally Championships. As I told you earlier, guys, look out for Team Batika. They're all over the place, not just the teams that are participating in the rally, but they have these cars with loudspeakers in the boots that are supposed to give you a party wherever you are. So those of you who are down in Naivasha, the Mara, Elementaita, I hope you're having a great time. This is an honor for Kenya, by the way, to host the World Rally Championships. And uh, from Batika to all of Team Kenya, we wish you all the best. I just want as many teams as possible from Kenya to complete this event. Now, I'm sitting here with Athletics Royalty. Whether we like it or not, they are <laughs> Athletics Royalty. Ferdinand Omanyala and Mark Otieno. Guys, first of all, I'm by the way, I'm enjoying our discussion. <laughs> You're quite some storytellers, eh? Yeah. Mm. But I am sure there's some huge challenges you guys go through. Because mm. if you full-time athletics, I need athletes, I need to know, does it pay your bills? Okay, for me... Uh, I've been saying of, over time and again that uh, if you want to get what you want to, you have to use what you have to get what you want. Mm -hmm. So for me, I cannot afford to buy the stuff that uh, professional athletes have. Mm -hmm. So you just improvise. Like you make your own things. So there's little money that I've been getting. Actually, my wife, uh, not wife, but girlfriend has been working and she's been... Why so are you correcting yourself? <laughs> <laughs> We're not married yet. <laughs> Okay, soon yeah, to I've be. not put the ring on a finger yet. I hope but it's soon to be. Yeah. yeah hopefully. So <laughs> after after she's been supporting me because she's been working and I've been training. So whatever comes in, we try and figure out how we're gonna use it and balance it mm -hmm. over the whole month. And then my dad and my parents have also been supportive because the sport is expensive. Mm. It's it's like three months ago that I was doing a budget of what how I'm spending on a whole month. Mm -hmm. I realized I was spending almost 100,000 and I don't have a job. So you can see how expensive that is. Just on equipment and <laughs> training. Training, you have to pay for the gym, move the movements around, you have to pay for the fair. I would think you have to pay for the fair. I'm going for <laughs> uh, Olympics. I'm, uh, yeah, you can do that. People are like, what are you doing yeah. here? The assumption is... You have is to pay. You have to pay and you have to yeah. buy food. Because when you talk about training and you're going home, now And then you need special diets, yeah. you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you need to eat well. Because you're training with Fanya. And the, the thing that you get into your body has mm. to go hand in hand. Any support from the government? Um, for me, oh, sorry. Um, for me, I'm not like a full-time athlete because mm. I do work at Kenya Posta. Yeah, so mm -hmm. got that job back in 2015. And at least most of the time, it's a London we can depend on. Since it's like I'm being sponsored by anyone. So salosa so size not just alone don't go jiki cam. So picky cam it's not that enough, but it's good. At least it's a stipend. So yeah. Yeah, but then that is tricky because mm -hmm. at the end of the day you're going to Olympics to compete with people who are full time athletes. Yeah. And you you have some sponsorship, you don't. Yes, me. You don't, don't have any sponsorship at the moment. Yes. And no one has called you in the last three days and said, <laughs> I want Mark to represent my ah. brand. Corporate Kenya is sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. No, for instance, some have called, but mm. according to my faith and what I believe, they can't go aligned with. So it's not that I can but mm -hmm. with what I believe, it's because I can't stand up for what they want to offer. Yes, but Which is fair enough. Yes. But I still think there are hundreds and thousands of brands that should yes. be stepping up mm -hmm. um, that can align with you. Because mm -hmm. for me, if I had a company, I would not mind seeing you <laughs> on my billboard selling yeah. my uh, soft drink or whatever it is. You know, mm -hmm. um, you've been fortunate to get some sponsorship. Yeah, and I won't call it sponsorship. It's like support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Audibets came in mm -hmm. uh, at the start of this year and they've been there with me for the, the last six months. So they pay some of your expenses and stuff like that? Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. it, I've, I've even moved from where I used to stay. I used to stay at Huruma. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, stay, I'm staying at Kasarani. So it's I, I must say that that has also played a part in my athletics career because now you're settled, everything is paid for, your family is staying fine, your girlfriend is at peace. As, as <laughs> 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 your girlfriend happy home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they have been so supportive, I must say that... Uh, that that support enough that support was good enough but it's not the way it should be yeah and i'm sure mm -hmm. it's not the way it is for other athletes around the world because mm -hmm. 100 meters it's such a high profile yeah, yeah. event mm -hmm. for every country except mm -hmm. well for us now i hope we give it uh, more respect mm -hmm. you know but what is your what is your wish what's your wish list for in terms of the corporate pa partnerships you can get uh for me and would you like to make an appeal <laughs> 
Okay, uh, here in Kenya, I've always been looking forward to Safaricom. I don't know why, but uh, Safaricom are good guys who can take up everything and do everything for you. Because wakikuja wanakuja fully. Globally, any shoe company that will meet my needs and that, that will be there for me. I don't want these companies that come and then after you getting an injury for a week, they, they cut off your they salary. You. Yeah. Mm. I, don't want to, I don't want that type of sponsorship. I want that, that guy who will work with me, at a believe in me, and say so whatever bra- the a, case. A, 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 an apparel, a brand. Yeah. Yeah, because every athlete has everything to gain. The yeah, cameras yeah. are on you, you're <laughs> on the international stage. Yeah. It's advertising for them. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I wish you, I mean, I'll, I'll make a call to my friends at Safaricom. Because Safaricom <laughs> has been known to <laughs> yeah. step up for yeah, that's so athletes in Kenya. Yeah, mm. whatever um, they're doing to Elliot is just awesome. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. But I wish more of our brands would walk with you and yeah. not wait for you. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not closing the doors for brands. Uh, that's mm. just an example. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the top list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah. No, but what would you hope? Because for me, I feel that a lot of corporates are just... They're putting their money on on advertising on in the middle of the news mm. or whatever. They haven't yet recognized the value mm. of getting an athlete as a brand. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, is that is that something I'm sure you're targeting? Yes, that's because you shouldn't mm-hmm. have to work at Posta. I yeah. mean, it's uh, good you have a job. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't have to work. You should yeah. be able to wake up and run yeah, and support your family. Yeah. Mm. and then compete mm. compete in the international events, not yeah. just appear. You know. Mm. Um, for me, I'm also thinking the same as Safaricom because that's <laughs> what I've been yeah. thinking all <laughs> along. And um, also like banks, and, uh, mm. like, um, you know, I'm, I'm with KCB, so I'm banking with KCB. So I would love them also to, you know, come up and you do know, the Kenyan support. Kenyan brand, it's, such, it's so well aligned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so well aligned. Because I know they do support, they have a rugby team, mm. you know, they have a football team. So why not athletics, like even if it's individual? Yeah. yeah, and they do rallying as well, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, that's so true. And, and the mm-hmm. government you didn't say that the, does the government do anything because uh, by the time you like now you're going into camp, you're going mm-hmm. into 21 days of mm. lockdown. I uh, assume you'll be at the government's expense, yeah, 100%. Yes, yeah, yeah. but they should have a plan mm-hmm. for uh, potential, I mean, to grow because I feel mm-hmm. the gov- our government is so good at rewarding you after. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe. <laughs> can call breakfast a reward mm. <laughs> under tweets <laughs> but we're not very good in preparing you mm. yeah. what more do you think the government can do for upcoming athletes for that i understand because me me i don't they do <laughs> okay <laughs> like an example <laughs> Sayim he hasn't seen you anywhere i mean you haven't seen the guy anywhere or the lady Will you sponsor him or her? But you've been participating in national no, events. No, like, leave, leave the national events alone. Mm. Like, nimekuja, mm. miukimbia. Nataka unisupport, ni petao. For me, <laughs> at the very least, they should have certain facilities. Okay, yeah, that and part. You all, we all go through PE in school. So mm. you identify these talents from a young age mm. and decide that, you know what, have our own qualifiers. Mm. What's your cutoff? Make it 15 seconds whatever it is yeah, you know. i have this dream of opening f- a, f- f- a, 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 a fo- not a foundation but building a something like a stadium mm. somewhere in western or kisumu because there is where the so- short sprints are because if you go to these primary school games mm-hmm. kimbia and their bare feet kimbia mm. mbaya sana. Mm-hmm. so this guy like for me i thank god kunileta nairobi because casting a nairobi i don't know if i could be where i am now because mm-hmm. Msana Majaza High School is so good or she is so good, but then Anapata Anajipata Jaramogi or Ginga Odinga University, there are no facilities, there's, there's no opportunities. Mm-hmm. So that, that's my that shags, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, if mm. this guy goes to Jaramogi and then mm. Anafika Apo first year, there's nothing, mm. Mm. there's no even competition, there's no even a sports department. Mm. Yeah. So at the same time, I have to resolve it. And that's mm. it. That's it. That's, that's it, it for, for, for that. Yeah. Mm. So if I take, if you build something like a stadium in that part of the country, and then someone will pass by and say, hey, let me go and train here. And then he comes, he or she comes, and then mm. you see this guy's good. So you see, you'll be building that person, he or she will compete, and then people will know, uh, this guy's fast. Mm. So that's how I think we'll develop talent in this country. I, I hope that the, the fact that you two have qualified mm. is going to yeah, open some, yeah, shift. some eyes in the government yeah. and mm. say we need to put 
uh, a lot more attention on, on these people. Mm. Um, Victor Wanyama is opening an academy. I hope he has space for, for, for athletics. For athlete, I hope He's so. He's opening one in Busia. <laughs> it's a very big complex. I've seen uh -huh. the plans. Uh -huh. And the, the, the stadium has a track. So oh, I just okay. hope that the professionals yeah. who, who, mm. who need to get in will, will, will get in. Yeah, that yeah? would be good. Yeah. That uh, would be good. Are those your, I mean, would you have wished that there was something like that for you? Um, for me personally, I would say, you know, the government is also trying with what they're doing and right. I've been trying to, <laughs> you know, you don't know what's <laughs> happening behind the scene, as to say, because they're doing their level best. Because even right now I can see like the other places that they're trying to bring up a stadium. Of course, it will take time. We don't know, of course, where the budget is going. But the thing is, is that... stadiums of rallies. Yeah, but the thing is, is that if they put more stadium, that will be much great for you know for athletes even we only have two ratified stadium in the whole country mm -hmm. that will be Nyao stadium and kasarani because our two like a month ago I was in italy and i saw that their stadium it wasn't that big but it was something that it was ratified it only had six lane but it's something that it can hold an event so if you can you know not think too big but something that you know it can sustain people in every county so that if you can have nationals in even though it's not Nairobi, but other places, you never know, you might discover that Nyawuru is even faster than Nairobi. Guys can split faster times, you know, in Eldoret or even some other places in Kisi. So that's the only thing that I can say. By the way, when you travel around, and mm. I'm sure you've both traveled the world, as you have mentioned, mm. you realize these facilities don't have to be so yes. exotic yes. and yeah, it doesn't have, Yes. Um, I actually moved from asking for five state-of-the-art stadium <laughs> to <laughs> asking for something decent in every county, mm. yes. you know? Like what they have maybe in mm. uh, in, in Machakos. Mm -hmm. Rather, every single county has at least the basics of facilities yeah. Yeah. Mm. for people. Let's talk about the Olympics now that you are going. Okay. <laughs> what are your targets? Okay, Realistically, for, me, for mm. me, is to handle every race as it comes. I cannot start thinking about the finals and you've not run the hits because you'll maybe you'll lose it at the hits. So, my main target at the Olympics to is to go sub ten. If that sub ten will mean it will win a medal, then thank God. Sub 10, it would be your own personal record. Yep. It would be a Kenya record. Yep. Mm. What's the record for Africa? Do you know? 9.85. 9.85, yes. Hey. By Fasuba. <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah. But I think for me, the fact that you've even qualified, mm. you've, uh, your name deserves to be in lights. What are your targets? Um, for me, it's just to take every race at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to leave God to settle every score. Because I don't want to set a certain target and not to, because I don't want to limit God as well. Because you never know what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> These plans are bigger than yours. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll take each race at a time from the heat, semis, who knows, I might reach at the finals and do something great. Uh, are you guys nervous at all? Uh, for me, um, I've already thought about those races. So the nervousness has gone down. Because I always think about my races before I run them, like three weeks before one month. So I've already run that race more than a thousand times since I qualified. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what I'm asking, because I hosted the, 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 what's it, the rugby ladies or the rugby men? I hosted both of them. Mm. I think it was the ladies who told me, the lionesses. Mm. Were the lionesses at the last in Olympics? No, the li the lionesses they? were yeah, at the last yeah, Olympics, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. ones who said they had their plans, and then just to enter the Olympic village, Everything they had thought they could, <laughs> it just went, you know, like culture shock. Yeah. <laughs> Complete culture shock. And it was the same for both the men and the women. Because mm -hmm. it was the first time the Sevens was in the Olympics. Olympics mm. yeah. So they said this time, and I think mm. Lionesses were the first team mm. to qualify from Kenya mm. for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And uh, for these Olympics. And they said, at least we've got that, those initial butterflies out. <laughs> so you can have your plans, you're settled. Yeah. You land in Tokyo like this. And then everything mm, else. Everything. But I'm one guy who's never who's never amazed with things. I've traveled. I've I've even performed the better. Olympics. I'm not trying to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get scared. Are you nervous at all, Mark? Um <laughs> I'm not underestimating every <laughs> any athlete as to say. Right now at the moment I'm not nervous, but I'm taking every practice at a time. So that, of course, I'll be nervous by then because the adrenaline it does help. 
So I'm taking every day at a time. <laughs> yeah. hey, even Beyonce says yeah. she, if she's not nervous, that's when she gets scared. No, if she's nervous. She knows these are now putting me in my place to have a good mm-hmm. performance. Eh? <laughs> who, who, apart from Usain Bolt, who's obviously your idol? Who else do you look up to in the hundred meter race? For me, right now, I can say Bromel, Trevor Bromel. Yeah, Mirena 977. It's a personal best. So, but. He he won the American trials for the Olympics with a nine point eighty. So he's he's a challenging guy, in fact with his height and he's so buffed and strong. So that's the guy that I'm looking up to and most of it is that he's representing Christ with what he's doing. In every race you could hear him just giving glory back to God. So that's the guy that I'm looking up to. Oh that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you Johan Blake, my guy. I hope he qualifies this week and then we meet there at the Olympics. (laughs) Now, now, that's what you you see him like this. You touch him like this. Yeah, then I'll beat him like that. Then you'll beat him like that. Uh, 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 Hi, how are you? Um, You're my my athletics idol and now let's race. Yeah, I look up to that guy because he has run very fast times over the period of years. Yeah. Um, how has this uh, COVID period affected you completely? Because it's, I mean, the, the Olympics were last year, now they're this year. Japan doesn't really want anybody there. Mm-hmm. Kenya has been moved from the village. I think the town we were supposed to stay, the city mm-hmm. we were moved. Mm-hmm. How does that affect you? I mean, how has the last year mm-hmm. been for, for, for your preparations? Um, the postponement of the Olympics has just been a blessing. Because, you know, as in we don't know what would have happened last year. Mm. So v- the postponement has just been, you know, it's just been a, be- a blessing for both of us. And, you know, we have qualified and we were really looking forward to, especially last year financially, it was a bit tight. But, yeah, God came through. We had to invest in some few things here and there for us to qualify for this Olympics. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. w- it was a blessing in these guys. Because mm. for me, I trained like six months without competition. And that was the best thing that I could ever done, do in my athletics career. You're not looking at any competition. Because, you know, if you're competing, then you have to turn down your training to fit the competition. But for me, I trained the whole time without any competition. You build up, you start, you start doing the speed work, and then you build up again. Yeah, that's, I think that's what has carried me to this. So it was a blessing in disguise. Actually, mm. exactly. In terms of, uh, I just want to go back to talking about coaching. Uh, and I don't know whether you have the answers to this. Is, are we coaching any coaches to take care of our 100 meter athletes? Because both of you seem to have foreign coaches. Okay, yours is not, but he's not, yeah. I'm not saying he's not qualified, but if you compare him to other athletes around the world, do we have coaching programs to coach our coaches? Because you can only be as good as your coach. Mm-hmm. And yet, we even see it in long distance races. They really have to rely a lot on foreign coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, where do we stand in terms of coaching and coaches? Do we have 100 meter coaches? Um, for the past few years of my career, career of running, I've seen that you have to study. You have to study, you have yeah. to learn. You have to research, you have to test and see. So we as athletes, we're all lab rats. So for the coaches, I can say that it's kind of, they, they all do, they do have, um, what can I say, it's, uh, it's a program that they d- someone comes and, you know, teach them in terms of qualifying in levels of coaching and everything. But they are all different, different with those who have met outside. Because mm. I don't know what I, I the... Uh, I yeah. mean, I, I've put you on the spot because it's not really a question for you. It's a, <laughs> it's a question for Athletics Kenya. Mm. Yeah. That what programs do they have? Mm-hmm. Because that's the only way we're going to advance in short distance races. Yeah. If uh, we have enough coaches to coach people. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, who is it you used to do 200? You used to do 200 meters as well? Yes, I do both, 100 and 200. Did you try qualifications for 200? <coughs> um, as to say the truth, I'm quite far. <laughs> I'm yeah. quite far because um, I ran 20.46 this season. That's not far. Uh, <laughs> 24, 24. Okay, 24, 20.24. It's far. Trust me, to be honest, in terms <laughs> of... 4.4 <laughs> is... Trust me, even sh- you know, even checking with 100 this year, I ran a 10.11. It took me like five years to go, and then going all the way down. Right now, I've ran a 10.05, and how many months of <laughs> training to put that 10.05? And 
doubling both events it's quite hectic as to say yeah. you know i can't do both events and run fast times because even running that 1005 i was tired the next day i was like <laughs> even thinking of running that 200 <laughs> it was challenging couldn't. yeah i couldn't so um that's why you know even in championship they do spread both events apart yeah yeah so I'm um, hopefully next year for Commonwealth Games and um, World Championships, I'll double. I'll try and space them out and see and qualify for, you know, 200 and 100 separately and see how it will go. Which other, because Kenya, we are, we are a long distance country. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the problem? Why we don't do well in short distance? Because people say sometimes it's, it's like physique. <laughs> 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 guys are physique eh? mm -hmm. and, and most of our runners are slender, <laughs> slender dudes. Eh? Yeah. So it's it's it's, it's Lewis and Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Ugali, Kuongi, Red, Igueno. So for me, uh, uh, uh? as in discouragement from the small age is what is killing sprints in Kenya because yeah. I've had a lot of guys being discouraged I was one of them that's not ours <laughs> yeah mm. or, or do marathon mm. or, or go and play rugby because mm -hmm. at least rugby or go and do any other sports so if we change that notion as Kenyans I think it will like I, I'm happy that you have done it we've gone to the Olympics with 100 meters so I know there are children down there who are looking up to us yeah mm -hmm. and they're now believing that this can be done mm. Lucky for him, he was told to go study. Me was told to go to marathon. <laughs> 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 I was told to go to marathon. I was like, hey, okay. How can marathon what work with? Yeah, time. I'm like, that cannot work. And but then, it's such a bad attitude. Yeah, and, yeah, that, and as you know, the year goes, someone telling you, go, you know, you need to elevate, go to 400, 800. Now you go until 15. I'm like, people are built differently. Because, yeah. you know, because they're saying that because there was one lady athlete who shifted from 100, she went all the way to 15 and all the way mm -hmm. to 5,000. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I believe at that moment she didn't discover her event. Because for me, I knew that I want to do 100 and 200 for my, you know, as this as a but career. the build is completely exactly, different. Exactly, but the build is completely yeah. different. Yeah. So I always tell guys like, we all build different because someone can do pure 100, they can't do 200. There's someone who can do 100, 200. Someone can do 200, 400. Yeah. If someone can do Plus. 400, 200, 100 at the same time, you know. You can do 100 and then 10,000 meters. <laughs> yes, you can do 100 <laughs> or four and then you go the way up to 10,000 But it meters. also comes down, to, comes down to parents and the guardians of the kids who have talent. Because mm. mm. if you discourage this kid at mm. a young age, that's it. He's not going to pick it up again and start mm. uh, chasing that dream. So we need to change our mentality. Yeah, yeah. it should change you, totally. You, for me, you guys are amazing because <laughs> you can almost not blame the parents mm -hmm. because they encourage their child to do what they see. Mm -hmm. and they have not seen 100 meter success. They have <laughs> yeah. not seen 200 meter yeah. success mm -hmm. in Kenya. So Cause that's yeah. what they know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my dad was a sprinter as well. He, he used to do 200. But the, th the good thing that he told me is that you go try it. Where it will mm -hmm. take you, we are here. So he just told me, you go try it. Mm -hmm. I think you're both lucky that you've had dads who have mm -hmm. run. Yeah. Yeah. My dad used to come and watch my rugby games in high school. Ah. So that's how <laughs> how good he was and lucky dad. I was. Yeah, that was the kind of dad ah. I got. And the support has been massive. Nah, so nice. I want to tell parents who mm. have kids with talent, mm. be, uh, specifically 100 meters and 200 meters, don't discourage this kid. Mm. But your Kenyan parents, bel African parents, believe so much in education that they force you to do things that you don't want to do. There's this guy. I know personally, Alifanya degree yake and he took it back to the parents and said, in yako, I'm going to do photography. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are forcing our yeah. kids to do things yeah. that they don't want to do. Mm. So if we can just be flexible with that, then this kid will have so much talent out here. But it's unfortunate because, and this is why, I, I, for me, the government and the federations need to do more work. I keep saying the best footballers and rugby players and everything in this country are sitting behind desks yeah. mm. because they have to get a real job because that's where they could pay their bills. Because yeah. at the end of the day, that's what you want. Mm. Um, uh, what they see, they see hey, footballers are hustling, rugby players are hustling, yeah. athletes are hustling. Mm -hmm. Of course, no parent wants that for their yeah. child. True, yeah. true. So you're forcing a talent mm. to Just give up. Yeah. 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 And we've seen what talent does around the world. Yeah, that's so true. We've seen the kind of 
income they earn, the kind <laughs> yeah. of lifestyles they They're earn, living, and yeah. then giving back. Because mm. at the end of the day, you do this to give back. Yeah. yeah? True. What true. are your hopes and dreams for yourselves beyond Olympics? Uh, we have so many championships coming. This was my first breakthrough year because mm -hmm. I've been running fast this year. Previously, I've been doing ten threes and ten twos. That's not good enough for the world right now. Mm. <laughs> 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 so it's just my first year into running fast. So I'm looking forward to many glorious years ahead. Mm -hmm. And then after that, like my plan was to build something that will tap talent, mm. most probably in the western part of the country. Okay, we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk. <laughs> Mark, what are your hopes and dreams? My hopes and dreams is that to continue with this sport even, you know, the years to come and to represent my country to an international and also to bring back medals. And my dream is that also to give back to the society and also to go out now scouting for those guys and know where to start because I'm picturing myself back in high school because there was no one to tell me that this game won't take you anywhere. Mm -hmm. So now it's that to go back and, you know, search for these guys, do coaching studies and now bring up competitive um, athletes from now a high school level because mm -hmm. that's where other countries want to chap here. Because mm. when I from high school or the university, they even get more intense. So by the time I came out of the university, now they have to choose. It's either you continue the job or do this professionally. Yes, on there. And also, you know, to get a big house and <laughs> start a family <laughs> <laughs> in my life yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and have kids and reward her for her hustle. <laughs> yes, reward, reward her, her for, for being your biggest cheerleader. <laughs> yes. And why not? Yeah. I, mean, I, I always tell people you can't go wrong with sport because of the values that sport teaches you. Yeah. You know, mentally, mm. physically, mm. the discipline, the hard work. It's the basic mm. principles mm. of success in any profession. Yeah, yeah. that's what you know. Mm. So even if, uh, and we've seen what Elliot has done for this country. For yeah, he's done marvelous. In, in terms of putting sport on the map, putting exercise on the map, mm. your health, you know, so many things, yeah. Yeah. so many different as, as aspects. Guys, I just want to say thank you so much for coming. Oh, you're welcome. I know thank this you. was short notice. Mm. You're going into 21-day lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're looking forward to it. Of uh, course, yeah. Make sure you stay safe. Mm. Eh? Mm. Make sure you stay safe. We want you strong. We want you healthy. Mm. We want you to have a good event. And for me, it's for me, you're already champions. Yeah, you thank know, you. I know you want to go and get medals, and trust me, if you get those medals, I'll be screaming <laughs> the loudest. But no the pressure. fact that you're representing Kenya in 100 meters for me, it's, mm. it's a shift for the country. Yeah, it's for me, it's history. Mm. Yeah. It's a whole shift that, mm. guys, we've been ignoring this event. Shame mm. on us, you know, shame <laughs> yeah. on me, Radul. I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking my own shame, no. you know, because and if people don't take advantage of this, from corporates should take advantage, the mm. safari com should take yeah. advantage of yeah. this, mm. you know, the government should take advantage of this yeah. to say, hey, okay, we've been missing out on something huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you guys have started. Uh, this is big. This yeah, is history. But thanks for much, so much for coming. Oh, you're welcome. Um, and uh, say hello to your beautiful wife and your girlfriend, and yeah, tell them really that. Uh, we are also behind you. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're right behind you. We're mm. behind them. Yeah, yeah. We're it, supporting you. It. We're wishing you success. Thank mm. you. And uh, we'll be cheering you on from here. Unfortunately, Thank fans are not allowed in Tokyo. Yeah. But we'll be shouting. You'll hear the Kenyan <laughs> <laughs> I hope yes. they put to watch parties around. They should. I believe they are. You just given me an idea. <laughs> they have allowed 10,000. They have allowed 10,000 fans to. They have allowed 10,000. That's, yes, but that's, that's nothing. But it's, it's something. It's but something. It's something. Compared yeah. to how many fans you would have wished. Um, uh, Kenyans seem to find their way around the world. Every <laughs> <laughs> athletics is here a flag. Yeah, that's that's flag. so true. <laughs> so anywhere in the world, <laughs> we penetrate. But thank you so much, and I wish you all the best. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Yeah, air bump. Air bump. <laughs> I'm feeling I'll get hurt. If <laughs> well, thank you guys all for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you learned something. I hope you're not going to run away from short distance races because, look, these guys are living examples of what you can achieve if you just put your mind, your heart, your spirit into it. Thanks for watching Radul Live. We'll see you next week where we have another great conversation.